Good morning, and we welcome you to Trinity Lutheran Church here in the state of Minnesota for our third Sunday of Easter. I got it right. I'm so proud of myself. Um, so we are uh, just excited to have, have you all with us as we uh, praise and worship our Heavenly Father this morning. And good morning, Cole and Taya. So glad to see that you are watching. And uh, Randy, if you're out there, we'll share the peace for, with you. Um, so God's peace with you. Um, and uh, let us just begin uh, with a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, the many blessings that you have given to us. Uh, just the gift of technology, uh, where even though we can't worship together um, here in your house, we can worship uh, through uh, Facebook Live. And we just ask that you bless our time uh, as we walk uh, on the road to Emmaus with uh, Jesus and the disciples. And just be reminded that he walks with us every step of the way uh, and that he is risen. And let us share that uh, message uh, with the world. And so we just ask you bless this worship uh, and our time together uh, virtually. It's in your name we pray. Amen. And uh, if you want to follow along, our order of service is uh, there on our Facebook page. Uh, otherwise, uh, training members, it's been emailed to you. And so we begin with our first song, Great Things.
have a God who certainly has done great things, uh, certainly in sending Jesus, uh, who has risen uh, and has conquered uh, the grave for us. And so we make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death, Death has no longer has dominion over him. Christ has risen from the dead. Alleluia. God the Father has crowned him with glory and honor. He has given him dominion over the work of his hands. He has put all things under his feet. Alleluia. Alleluia. And so let us go to God our Father and confess our sins to him, our merciful Father. And we confess. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Creator and Preserver, we admit and confess our sinfulness. We are stained by sin from our very beginning. We have sinned again and again in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves, and have turned away from one another in our thinking, speaking, and doing. We have done the evil you forbid us, and have not done the good you demand. We do repent and are truly sorry for all of our many sins. Have mercy on us, gracious Father. Forgive us all that is past, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, direct our lives so that we may serve you in true faithfulness. Grant us victory over all that oppresses us, and build your kingdom among us here through Jesus Christ our Lord. In his boundless mercy, God has promised forgiveness of sins to those who repent and turn to him for restoration and renewal. And therefore, as a called and ordained servant of Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, God keep you in his grace by the Holy Spirit, and grant you life on earth in which you tell of his greatness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. And let us pray. O oh God, through the humiliation of your Son, you raised up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people, rescued from the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness and eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading for this third Sunday of Easter comes from the book of Acts, the second chapter. Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words he bore witness, and continue to exhort them, saying, Save yourself from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. And our first reading this morning comes from the book of 1 Peter, the first chapter. If you call on him as Father, who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, Conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile, knowing that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. He was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last time for your sake. 
who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God, having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart, since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers, and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And this word is the good news that was preached to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This time I invite all of our children uh, to get ready for an amazing, amazing children's message. Be ready. Oh boy. Good morning, boys and girls. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Um, so today in our next Bible story, we are going to hear about two men going on a walk. Now, just a few days before, Jesus had died on the cross, and they, he had risen from the dead. But these two men were on their walk, and they were feeling very sad because their friend Jesus had died. Now, they were so sad that they didn't even notice that it was Jesus who joined them on their walk. So they're walking to a town called Emmaus, and as they're walking, Jesus says, why are you so sad? And these two friends think that Jesus is absolutely crazy. They don't know it's Jesus, and they say, don't you know what happened this weekend? Jesus died on the cross. So these two men were sad going on their walk, and they get to their house. And Jesus was going to keep walking, but they said, it's kind of late. Why don't you stay at our house? So then they bring him in, and they have a meal, and Jesus breaks bread. And suddenly their eyes were opened that it was Jesus. And Jesus performed a little magic trick and disappeared. Now, in the next two verses are something we maybe don't focus on so much, but we hear that they left their house immediately, went back to Jerusalem to share the good news. Now, how do you feel when you get good news? Maybe your parents come home and say, we have great news for you. How does that make you feel? You probably feel excited, don't you? And maybe the good news is that you get to play outside, or you're getting a new puppy, or I don't know, lots of things that are good news. So when you have that good news, you want to share it with everyone, don't you? So we have such great news that we want to share. Jesus is alive. He died on the cross. Our sins are forgiven, and he is alive. So I want you this week to share that good news. You might have to get a little creative. Um, maybe it's drawing a beautiful message with chalk on your driveway. I've seen some pictures of those. Uh, maybe it's drawing a picture and, and taping it on your window. I want you to get creative on how you can share the good news that Jesus is alive. And if you have a great way to do it, um, have your parents send me a picture so I can see it. All right, let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross, for taking away our sins, and for rising from the dead. Jesus, help us to share that good news that you are alive. Amen. If you want to rise from your couch or wherever you are, you may rise out of respect for the Holy Gospel. And the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, named Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God 
and all the people. And how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning. And when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it, just as the women had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that Christ should suffer these things and enter into glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them all and all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as if he were going farther, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table at the table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven, and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had known of them in the breaking of the bread. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We begin with our next hymn, Crown Him with Many Crowns. This morning 
uh, is a, a rather familiar one, a, a wonderful uh, story uh, of the risen Christ. And one that is, I think, a little more relatable uh, for us. Uh, the last couple of weeks we've looked at uh, the women certainly going to the tomb, uh, being amazed at the tomb being empty, uh, maybe fearful, and seeing the angels, and then going and telling uh, the disciples. And then last week, uh, the story of Jesus appearing to the disciples in the locked room of, of Thomas and, and doubting and having to touch with his hands and see with his eyes that it is Christ. Uh, that certainly is not us. But I think today's text is a little more relatable for us. We have two disciples who certainly are not known. The only time that Cleopas is mentioned in the Bible, this disciple of Jesus, is mentioned here in Luke's Gospel, the 24th chapter. And so we have the story today. We see here that they encounter Jesus, but certainly don't know that it is Jesus until he is their breaking of the bread. They are just normal guys walking and seeing Jesus. And Jesus stands there and tells them scripture, opens their eyes, these disciples here had trouble trying to understand the scriptures, totally understanding what Jesus had come here to do. That had been prophesied for a long, long time of the prophets telling them about Jesus and what he was to do. And it wasn't until they are at the table where he breaks bread that their eyes are opened. And they realize that they have been with Jesus. And so we see from the beginning of our text that the disciples are in despair. They are sad. They had been walking with Jesus for a couple years, seeing the amazing things that they had done. They had thought that he was the one who would redeem them. And now he has been crucified. And now they don't know where he is. And so they are sad. They had hoped that this was the one. But now their hopes seem to be dashed. I think the same can be known for us. We have had so many hopes in our lives that have been dashed. I had big plans of being a professional hockey player. Go to Michigan State. My parents dashed that dream. Actually, it was just my skills that kind of dashed that dream. We all maybe hope to see our name on a cast list. Or to see our name on an honor roll. But then we get there and see that it's not there. I can remember also, I was, being, I was at homecoming court my junior and senior year, and I thought for sure that I would be named king. So I had high hopes. And then that Friday, the basketball game and football games, they announced who it is. My name was not called. The hope of being king or dad. The disciples were heartbroken. Much like us on our hopes that have been dashed. Not understanding what had happened to Jesus. But then notice that Jesus comes and meets them. Asking them what they are talking about. And Jesus gives them a quick and quite a extensive Bible study. Beginning with Moses and the prophets and walking them through the scriptures up until the moment of Jesus. And the one whose spirit inspired the prophets in the first place was now opening their minds and eyes to the one whom they had prophesied about. Central to his lesson was the necessity of the Messiah and his suffering and glorification. And they continued to walk, and we notice that as they are about to 
The disciples are about to end their journey, go back to their house. It looks like Jesus is going to continue. And so the disciples invite Jesus to come with them. There he breaks bread, blesses it, and their eyes are open. And from this text, we can certainly see the connection between the meal in this text and the Lord's Supper. This is not the first time that Luke describes Jesus blessing, giving thanks, breaking bread, and giving it to his disciples. Jesus' willingness to join these disciples for a meal indicates a commitment to fellowship, community, for which we all are longing for in these days of separation. We long to be together. For we have all been invited into community, into a body. We were created to be in relationship with one another. And so this time of separation is hard for us as followers of Jesus. But Jesus makes his way to our tables on a daily basis. For if you pray the prayer, come Lord Jesus, be our guest, as your evening or morning table prayer, this is exactly what is happening in this text. They invite Jesus to be their guest during this meal. The same way we invite Jesus into our meals to ask him to bless it and to be there with us. The point is, Jesus makes himself at home with us. He joins us, ushering himself into our lives even before we might recognize him. Now it is worth noting how Jesus never told his disciples to go back and tell the disciples about what they had experienced. For we notice that that hour after Jesus disappears, what do the disciples do? They rush back and tell the disciples what they had in common. Their hearts burned, their feet ran, and their mouths opened. The Lord is risen indeed. We have seen him. So as I look at this text, I think it's worth noting that Jesus does the work here. Who opens the disciples' minds is Jesus. Who makes them see and recognize that it is him? That's well, Jesus. Jesus, with that encounter, that burningness, desire to go and tell people compels them to go and share the word of who he is. Jesus comes and stays with them. He walks with them. And it certainly is amazing to see how Jesus is working through his people during this time of COVID-19. Using these unique times to draw people to him through his people. We have seen that more people are turning to God's word. Jesus is opening people's minds to who he is. What he has come to do. That salvation is theirs. Forgiveness is theirs because of him. More people are realizing that Jesus is is risen. He is risen indeed. His word is bringing comfort to people. And it is my prayer that God's word is coming to you as well, bringing you comfort during this time. Notice that it is Jesus who is at work in us. It is Jesus who is at work in other people's lives. And that can give us comfort and encouragement to know that Jesus walks with us. Jesus will give us the words to say to people. 
Jesus will open their mind. And their hearts will long to know who he is and what he has done for them. Brothers and sisters, it is Jesus who makes himself at home in our lives. It is Jesus who brings us comfort and peace. And it is Jesus who continues to walk with us and who will always be with us. Brothers and sisters, Jesus walks with you today, tomorrow, and every day of our lives. Find comfort in that. He is here to stay. To God be the glory forever and ever. Amen. We now continue in our service by joining together and singing our next song, Stronger. Yes, Jesus is Lord of all, and he is risen indeed. And let us continue to confess and proclaim that to the world. And so let us join together in confessing the words of the Apostles' Creed. And we confess, I believe in God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under conscious power, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We pray for the whole church, that the message of salvation joyfully be told throughout all the world, and the Easter victory of Jesus Christ be celebrated around the globe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the nations of the world, 
for the governments of all nations to be a source of blessing to those who are governed, and that oppression in all forms be hindered. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves in this season of our Lord's great victory, that we truly be Easter people all year long, radiating the light of Christ in our homes, workplaces, and communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who serve us through their callings, especially for those who deal with special challenges or dangers on a regular basis, including police, fire, and emergency personnel, and the doctors and nurses in the hospitals and doctor's offices. We also remember at this time the military forces of our nation, those stationed both at home and abroad, whose efforts serve to defend our nation in challenging times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those with special concerns and needs this day, especially for Gail's friend, Lorraine. Those who are hospitalized, those who grieve, the unemployed and underemployed, the chronically ill and shut-in, and all those whose needs are not known to us at this time. Bless them with your presence, gracious Father, that they have a sense of victory in their lives and find strength and hope for each day. And we especially pray for those who are suffering from the COVID-19 virus, those that are in the hospital, those that are separated from families and loved ones. Lord, we ask for healing. We ask for um, a sense of normalcy, that we can come back together um, and worship and be uh, a body and a um, group uh, once again. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we bless you for having placed into our lives faithful Christian people to guide us. On, the, on this day, we remember those who no longer are among us on earth have completed their earthly races and have won the final victory in Christ. Lead us to follow in their way, that we rejoice together eternally at your table and in your mansion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. This time in our service uh, is a time for offerings, and so we ask uh, that if you would like to uh, continue with your offerings, uh, you can do that electronically, or you can certainly continue to send in uh, your offerings uh, for your envelopes, uh, members, um, just put a stamp on it and send it uh, to us here at the church. Um, and also during this time, as, as we kind of um, uh, end our worship, I encourage you to kind of share with us uh, how maybe Christ has continued to walk with you, or how you have seen Christ uh, continue to walk with you uh, during these last um, few weeks. Um, so if you want to share that uh, with us uh, on the comment section, uh, we'd be uh, glad to see how Christ uh, has been walking with you and uh, maybe burned uh, some desire of following his scriptures um, or pointed you to something uh, for comfort. And so uh, you may share that with us. And so let us join together in praying the prayer our Lord has taught us to pray in the Lord's Prayer. We pray, Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now receive our Lord's benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace, that he is risen, he is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. We conclude with our final hymn. Oh, man. Now all the vault of heaven resounds. I knew it was coming to me. So join us in our last hymn.
thank you for joining us for worship this morning here at Trinity in Sabin. And so I pray that it is a beautiful day like it is here uh, where you are. Um, and uh, it is just a pleasure to continue to be able to bring uh, God's word um, to you. Uh, that Jesus is uh, risen and he has paid the price for us all. And so uh, know that we miss you uh, and we can't wait to see you. Uh, Camila and Lupita, good seeing you. Hope to see you real soon. Uh, Everett and June, I hope you're paying attention. Um, I, I'm watching for you. And uh, Beckett and, and Tedley, if you're out there, uh, I miss you guys as well. All the, all the children out there, uh, especially, um, you know, my children, uh, for being up here in the children's message. I mean, you want to come up and, and join us? No? Okay. And um, the Orr family... Uh, you know, my, my children's messages aren't the same because, you know, you always ruin them for me. No, I'm just joking. Enhance. Uh, they enhance very well. Uh, and so uh, before I just continue to, to ramble on, uh, I invite you to have a wonderful rest of your day. And Emily has one announcement for me. No, Alita said Everett is yelling, I'm here, I'm paying attention. <laughs> okay, I'm glad to hear that. Good. Um, so you guys have a blessed rest of your day. Know that Christ continues to walk with you, um, and he is with you every step of the way. And so continue to invite him uh, into your lives um, and let him bring that comfort to you. Um, and Brad Burns, I hope to see you real soon, buddy. I'm glad you're watching. Have a great rest of your day, and God's peace.